You know, the concept of fractal data compression has been with us for a very long time. And in fact, it's well known that fractal data compression is the only form of compression which is potentially infinite compression. And everyone has always recognized that that's the only way biology does it. In fact, DNA is one of the best examples of a golden ratio based fractal data compressor there is. We call that braiding algorithm in DNA conjugate. The point being that in the past it was thought that fractal data compression was commercially unfeasible because the CPU horsepower required to recognize self-similarity in the data array was, of course, pricey. However, today that's not the case, you know, that's changed. And people haven't realized that real-time data compression is more than just sticking it on a disk. Real-time data compression has to do with what you send down the phone line and all kinds of beautiful things and powerful things you can do. Mm -hmm. And there are ways to do this with crystals, etc. and Bill is going to talk about that. Yeah, well anyway, uh, essentially what we're talking about is resurrecting a technology that which has been abandoned because we didn't have the technology at that time to pull it off. And so, uh, well, uh, this is uh, something that began with iterated systems in Georgia and afterwards it uh, was sold to Japan and has had a limited amount of application. What we're talking about doing now is to uh, resurrect this and bring it forward, updating it uh, with uh, today's uh, processors. So what this means, okay, what does the application mean? So with uh, on the fly 100 to 1 compression, we're looking at T1 speeds and a normal twisted pair copper line. We're looking at uh, freeing up bandwidth for cellular use. Uh, for example, right now we're boosting uh, frequencies with cell phones uh, into dangerous domains uh, that are uh, affecting us biologically, we can actually uh, reduce those frequencies down to a more usable level where there's less interference. So uh, this technology is essentially more benign than the tech that we have right now. But looking at the technology and philosophically, you know, we are doing work on implosion and phase conjugation. And actually, those two terms, for example, are really names for wave compression, and wave compression is the essence of data compression. And we're also involved in building bioactive fields with conjugate uh, <coughs> dielectrics and magnetics. And that is also about non-destructive compression. Non-destructive compression was Einstein's dream, and actually the solution to virtually every problem in physics, technology, and philosophy relates to the concept of non-destructive compression, which is what we think we've solved in wave phenomena, and now we can apply that beautifully and commercially to data compression.